Good morning. It is 9.53, according to my, uh, clock. So I'm gonna give people a chance to show up. So, note to self, if I'm doing, uh, sure, that, music, I have to do it beforehand. And actually, while I'm playing around in the five minutes before I start, I should see if I can also do this other thing. Because I don't know if it will let me show off my capture gallery. See if the stream will catch up here. Nope. Okay. Alright, so I guess this is going to be... Uh, different than I planned, but that's fine. It just means that I'm going to be showing off all of my Inquisitors slightly the hard way, I guess. But that's fine.
Ah, no, that's right. There was an update. It might take more than five seconds for this to... No, we're good! Fabulous. I love this MacBook so much. It works so well. And we're fully charged. Everything is good. We're good. Just give folks a minute or two to hang out, show up, go from there. I see you there. Also, hello to the other two people watching. But for some reason, it's not showing me who that is. That's fine. My clock says 10, so I'm gonna get started here, and I'm also going to turn that down a little bit so I'm getting feedback. Oh, Fix that. Okay. There we go. Okay, so, hi. Um, this is Artificer Ilari. Um, I am a very new streamer. Um, my first stream was Monday, and it was a slight disaster. So if you weren't here, you didn't miss much. Um, I'm probably going to end up saying a lot of the same things in a slightly less disorganized fashion, and this time you won't have to watch me play, like an hour's worth of gameplay in two and a half hours, because I'm a mess. Anyway, so, um, I am, as I said, Artificer Larry. I, uh, named my account after my first Inquisitor, because I think he's got a really awesome name. I really like his name. So, I went with it. And then when I decided to replay him, I decided that that was going to be how I started streaming, because that was... it made sense. It may not make as much sense as I think it does, but that's that's life. Um, I have... Let's see. Let's, As a matter of fact, let's just look. I have uh, nine files on here. Um, Ilari, the, the, the top one is the one that I started Monday. He is an elven rogue, and uh, the first time I played him, I played him as a Tempest, and I was mostly just trying to figure out the game. And I didn't use his specialization, like, at all. So that didn't actually do much of anything the first time I played him way down here. Um, I... If I remember correctly, that was like a 
216 hours. Um, so that was that was how that was how long it took me to figure out the game and uh, not die. Uh, I have a running like personal joke that he has terrible ankles because I kept falling off of things and taking damage. So Ilari has weak ankles. Weak angles, strong heart. Um, he's mainly dual wield because I would rather do that than archery for the most part, but you know, I figured out after that playthrough that if I'm fighting dragons with a rogue, I, I should probably equip a bow because I will die less. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I still uh, hold that opinion this time around, now that I have played three rogues. Um, the second character... These are all out of order for some reason. Um, I think I'm just going to do it this way so that I can actually show you my, uh, my characters. It, it'll probably auto-save somewhere in there when I don't want it to, but that's fine doesn't matter. Um, I decided that Ilari is just absolutely an animal person. He loves all the animals unless it's bears. And then he just kind of goes, uh, no, let's, let's not, you know. It's it's that it's that scene in the uh, the Jaws of Hakon DLC when he goes. Uh, traditionally, I do not get along with bears. So, um, get out of the weird light. So, right. let's see if I can. Please calm down, Bull. You are dead, Inquisitor. Please Your calm down. Please calm down. I just want to show off my pretty pretty Inquisitor. I don't. I didn't remember making him this armor. Uh, let me go over here. There we go. Oh no, I guess I slightly remember this armor. I... This wasn't the pretty one though. Hang on. Let me show you the pretty one. He looks really good in like blues and greens and things. <gasps> I don't have it with me. Shame on me. Okay. This would be a really good time for me to be able to uh, go back and show you my... Um... What's the word? Capture gallery. That one. Because I have uh, a couple of images in my capture gallery where he's slightly fancier looking. Okay. Nope. This is, this is... It was before the Winter Palace. I was probably still at Skyhold when I did this. Let me see if I can find this armor. If I can't find it, you're out of luck. But, like I said, he looks, he looks fabulous in blues and greens. And, uh, the, the 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 armor that he was wearing, I believe, is um, no. The ice dragon scales were blue, weren't they? I forget what the white was. Huh. Anyway, I can also check with Ravanian because he's uh, he's my other. Elven, ro well, one of my other elven rogues, and he was definitely okay. Let me. Ravanian, I intentionally put in white because he looks fantastic in white. No, I just don't have it. Okay, well, either way, um, Ilari just kind of looks good on everything, so he... I, I don't... I didn't really pick a color scheme for him, for the most part, because he's just pretty. 
I'm really fond of him. He's fabulous. He's incredibly emotional. He's, uh... The first... He's generally the first character to, um... He won't, uh, argue so much as he will just react. Um, I kind of put him together as the, the, the less logical, more emotional character. As I said, weak ankle, strong heart. Um, he, as I said, he was initially a, uh, Tempest. And so I played... Ilari, like four, five, wait, five years ago, four years ago, something like that. And the first time I played this, I was like, I don't have to romance anyone. I have no interest in romancing people. And then, you know, you play through your, uh, the first major quest line. You go to Redcliffe, you don't realize that you have the option to go talk to the Templars, you talk to the mages, you get thrown into a time portal and then Dorian says I'll protect you and I go oh no oh no I'm gay so <laughs> that was how that worked um so we romance Dorian um that is also how that's gonna play through with uh my replay of Ilari except this time he is going to be an artificer thus my username um because that suits his character better. But like I said, I didn't really use any of the specialization stuff my first playthrough anyway, because I didn't get it. Um, second character was Asya. And I want you to notice that I went from 216 hours to 140. This is what happens when I figure out a game a little bit. Not necessarily super well, but I figured it out. So, um, I should probably stop loading the Elven Ruins saves, because those are not the ones that are going to give you an idea of how my characters look, except that it's sunny, but I can always run around, uh, into Josephine's hallway. Anyway, um, Ilari was my first character, Azia was my second, she, I hadn't figured out yet that this was like my favorite game ever so I was like hmm I guess if I have a second character she I'm gonna make Ilaria twin so I can you know explain away oh that's in a, that's in a different place so why would that save immediately before that as you get up okay so you super can't see her. Cool. We're gonna reload at Skyhold, I guess. Because that makes more sense. Um, Asya is Ilari's twin. I think I did a pretty okay job. Kind of making them resemble each other. I didn't, you know, try to clone their faces or anything. But um, she is a Dalish mage, obviously. I gave her the Night Enchanter specialization because I... It hadn't honestly it's mostly because I hadn't figured out mages and I just wanted to run around and beat things with a sword but also magic because that's that's how I play mages I guess so um they were wearing the same clothes that's I didn't do that on purpose uh get out of the sun so this ah Camera, camera. There we go. No, you don't want to. This is Asya, looking incredibly angry. She doesn't generally, but either way. Um, let's see. Uh, Night Enchantress specialization. She is incredibly sassy. Was was kind of stubborn and bullheaded at first, but uh, still sensitive and empathetic. She was trained to be the keeper, after all, right? Um, she will absolutely fist fight you if pressed. She is a mage, and she doesn't care. Um, show me your armor. Doesn't wanna. Um, 
She flirted with Cullen. That's right, I had the fancy um, sentinel armor for her. Um, she flirted with Cullen a lot, and also Solus, because I was like, yeah, let's, let's flirt with the cute human that I find very interesting, and the elf that I ignored entirely too much on my first playthrough. You are fascinating. Let's do more with you. Um, so I eventually romanced Solus uh, with Asya and mostly went Aah! a lot because, you know, that's what happens when you romance Solus. Um, she... Basically, what happened with that one was I ignored Solus completely my first playthrough. Like, I talked to him, as you do when you're, you know, running around and talking to your party members, and then I didn't do anything. There we go. There was my second favorite armor. Fancy, shiny, silver uh, sash and blues and greens, because she looks really good in those. Um, but I really like the sentinel plate, because several obvious reasons. Anyway, um, I will always have my elves in super fancy elven armor if I can, because I think they look way better in it. Um, Asya, what's special about Asya? Asya looks really good in, like, rich colors and jewel tones and the like. She... She's just, she's very, she's very reactive in a slightly less uh, sensitive, empathetic sort of way. Ilari is very emotions and no, I want to save everyone all the time. Asya is just emotional. She's going to respond emotionally to everything. And if she's pissed off, she is going to punch you. Um... I, I have a I have a, a tendency to play elves like a lot. Elves are my favorite fantasy race for so many reasons. So I have played uh five elves. Um those were the first two and then I went, I should play a dwarf. So I went opposite of what I usually do and I played a dwarven warrior. I don't usually play warriors, even though I play things like a warrior. Also notice, 99 and a half hours. This playthrough with Lavi was so easy in comparison. I'm going to go back to Skyhold. I am not going to make that mistake again. Um, that, that last four and a half hours was all the DLC. The, uh... No, that's a lie. That was specifically Trespasser because I see Frostback Basin and the Deep Roads before that. So, 95 hours before Trespasser, and the last four and a half was Trespasser. Um, I did the champion specialization with him, which means that he was just a short, stout wall. He, 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 was, he was the one that was, you know, creating the bottleneck, or... Whatever. This was this was my single easiest playthrough. Um, he is smart and sneaky and sarcastic, and when they gave you the chance um, to choose your character's background when you were talking to Josephine, I was like, he's probably a smuggler, I guess. Um, he's incredibly smart, sneaky particularly for a warrior, incredibly sarcastic, um, generally jovial, well-liked. Um, oh my goodness, get out of the shadows. Lavi, shadows, get out of them. I know you're a dwarf. Okay. Um, I kind of can't get out of the shadows here, can I? So, Lavi was the uh, first Inquisitor that I ran around with wearing mostly the, the pink and purple uh, Skyhold outfit here. And I was like, this is probably supposed to be for ladies. I don't care. Lavi looks good in it. Um, his 
armor. Let's look at his beautiful face. How did I end up with him with 35 cunning? 35 cunning, 42 constitution, 56 strength. He's just, he's great. Okay. Um, because of the, the, the lighting on here, of course, you can't really see his freckles. He is very freckly. Um, but I saw the, uh, the dwarven armor that you get, I believe, via the Descent DLC, and I was like, that's fantastic. I have a dwarf. I'm going to put him in dwarven armor, and I'm going to make it out of... Um, I think... I've forgotten what I made it out of. I think that might have been Serpent Stone and Silverite, but anyway, um, that was, that was his, the Revered Defender armor is, yikes, but the Legion armor, that's what it was, blocking stunning Legion armor, because that was how I crafted it. He looks fantastic, so that was, that was Lavi. He's not my most interesting Inquisitor, um, Oh, and he romanced Iron Bull, which came entirely from me going, once again, nah, I don't think I'm going to romance anybody this time. And then you get to the part where Bull mentions that he likes redheads, and I went, I'm playing a redheaded dwarf. Um, going with it. So, and he was totally fine with all of that until the teasing got public, and then they sorted it later, because, oh my god, Bull, shut your mouth. Let's see, who was next? Next was... Next was Rovanian. Next I went back to Elves, because I have no chill. This uh, this Inquisitor was the one that I actually intentionally um, played as a Tempest. And then, you know, we get back up to 138 hours. I'm not kidding. Lavi was a boss. Um... Like I said, Elven Rogue imp intentionally played as a Tempest, actually used the specialization skills. Um, he is... You, you, you won't get this in the game, but this is what I do. I do character backgrounds and things. Um, so he will be taller and somewhat stout for an elf, because uh, elves in, in games and in most media are just these willowy little things, and either they're super tall because they're Tolkien High Elves, or they're kind of short and just small in general because I don't know that's that's the direction Dragon Age went in I'm sure that came from somewhere else um, but so he's kind of neither of those things he's not exactly fat because I can't reconcile a fat elf in my head with what you get in the game so he's just kind of stout um, there's no good place. Let's run around a little bit and get you in the light. In the light. In the light. There we go. And land on Solus' desk. So, um, that's not much better, actually, surprisingly. Anyway, let's go to character record so you can see his beautiful face. Um, Ravanian... I always, I have to be honest with you, I always picture him with an Irish accent. Um, he is hot-headed, short-tempered, incredibly passionate. He's like the extreme of Asia. Um, I also decided somewhere along the line that they're cousins because I never have the patience to go through and change the uh, sliders all that much during character creation. So I was like, hey, Ravanian looks a lot like Ilari. I'm I'm okay with that. Uh they're related. And also their last name is still Lavellan. Um they're cousins. Yeah. Cousins. So um as I mentioned, Ravanian looks really, really good in white, so I went overboard with the light colors with his final armor. Um the white and the silver and the silver of a different shade, basically. Um, he's... He's also... The the short-tempered thing was partly because I was like, ha ha ha, he's a tempest, he's super emotional. Yeah, let's 
you know. But also, he's a rogue. He's sneaky. He's ridiculous. He is the kind of person that somehow kind of stays cool when the chips are down, making you wonder how much of his hot-tempered nonsense is an act, and really, it's half and half, because he can absolutely control himself to a to a point. He is less short-tempered than he appears, um, but he, he doesn't care to rein it in most of the time, so he just goes with it. Um, he is super bi, romanced Cassandra, absolutely head over heels for her. He's, he's like... Oh, oh! You want you want you want a fancy fairy tale romance? Let me go to Val Royo and get flowers and candles and 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 buy all the things, which is hilarious because he was a poor, poor elf um, coming into this. Um, I didn't really give him much of a non-game backstory, but I imagine that he was probably a uh, a Dalish elf that kind of went fuck you and ended up in a city running around, so he was uh, probably stuck in alienages a lot. Um, super, super poor. Um, meanwhile, my next... Um, oh no, no, that's a lie. He has a twin, but I didn't play him next. Next was... Um, my Kunari, because I planned her, like, two playthroughs before this, and then went, no, I'm doing this. So, Nissa. um, oh, I guess, okay, apparently Nissa took even less time than Lavi, which I did not remember, because, uh, his final save was at, like, 99 and a half hours, and hers is at 92.15. Um, and before the trespasser stuff the last one is at 8719 so that's wow i did i did not remember that um so i'm going to go back here to show you ms nissa nissa adar because that's just they choose their names for you of course and then oh i looked up what that meant hang on um, Adar is a Kunari word, and, or Kunlat, I guess. I don't know if that's the, the, the name of the language, or if that is also the, um, descriptor for the language. I don't know. Anyway, um, it means... Here we go. Um, Adar, a ship-mounted cannon, literally fire thrower, also means weapon, as Iron Bull puts it, while talking to about his name to a Kunari Inquisitor. Um, that's from the wiki. So, her 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 name means weapon. Um, she is. I I specifically created Nissa to be slightly an asshole, or rather, uh, slightly more. Um, accurately to have different priorities than everyone else because she's a Kunari mercenary and probably doesn't care about the same things as, you know, some elves or a dwarf or what have you, um, or God forbid a human noble. So... Nissa is a rift mage. Um, I kind of I I I wanted her to be different from my other characters, so I was like, yeah, sure, I'm gonna make a Kunari. That's that's as different as it gets, right? And I I love her so much. I tried to play an asshole, and then I was like, nah, she's great. We're not doing that. And you know, of course, I realized partway through that as Kunari are uh, coded as a, a different race. I've, I've seen it uh, argued that Kunari are slightly coded uh, as the way uh, black people would be in American culture. I was like, mm, this is slightly racist. I'm going to not do the racist thing. Um, you know, live and learn, and hopefully uh, implement that. But anyway, um, she is sort of the logical character initially she she seems 
really uh, calculating and logical, and then she flies off the handle sometimes. Um, and I and I don't mean that in a temper sort of way. I mean that she's just slightly nuts. Um, I came up to Cullen with her the first time, and I was like, oh my god, she is an entire head taller than Cullen. I'm going to intimidate the hell out of Cullen. So that was how I played her with just about everyone. Um, she also somewhat butted heads with Bull at first. Haha, <laughs> pun. Um, but they, they, they got over it. Um, they were, they were friends later. Um, she wasn't really hostile with anyone. I don't recall anybody coming off like they disliked her at first. I don't remember, though. Um, Romance Sarah, which was the other thing. I was like, if I'm going to play a Kunari, I'm going to give Sarah a Kunari girlfriend because I have to. You can't, you can't, like, it was like Bull going, oh, I like redheads while I'm playing a redhead, which I had completely forgotten about until that moment. Difference was, I remembered it with Sarah. Um, I think the, uh, my previous playthrough, I think when I was running around with Ravanian, I had, um, No, she didn't wear any of these, did she? None of them. Um, I think when I was running around with Ravanian, I think I heard... Like, there was. there's one scene in the, uh, the banter where Sarah can make some comment about Kunari women, and Bull just, like, turns around and decks her because her health immediately drops, and I just went... <laughs> Sarah, Sarah, no. Also, Bull, stop punching your teammates. Why? Um, so I gave her a Kunari girlfriend. No, no punching required. Um, I also decided that at some point, uh, Nissa probably carries Sarah around on her shoulders a lot. And, you know, given, given how tall she is, her horns would probably end up just about in Sarah's waist. So they turn into armrests because Sarah... So, um, next, I have so many characters, you guys. Next was Alva. Alva is Ravanian's twin, except they look nothing alike. No, and, and once again, we're, we're right around Lavi's numbers. So I guess I had really figured out mages after I stopped trying to, um, turn them into berserkers like Asya. Because looking at these hours, I did pretty good with both of my mages. Which is hilarious, because I tend to be better uh, at playing rogues, but I guess they take me longer. Because... I don't know. Oh, and actually, the other reason uh, Nissa didn't take me as long was because I didn't do any side quests that didn't show up on the map. I didn't go looking for side quests with Nyssa, so that makes sense. I'm not sure exactly why that ended up happening with Alva, but either way, um, Alva is, there we go, he is Ravanian's twin, he is albino, do not adjust the settings of your screen, um, oh no, where is your face, there is your face, this is Alva. Um, they, he is very tall, like Ravanian, and very skinny, unlike Ravanian. Um, he is somewhat emotionally driven, but he's not going to necessarily act on his emotions. He's very pragmatic, he's very logical. He, um... I, I started him just because, like I said, I like elves. I like playing elves. I also find them uh, much easier to maneuver in Inquisition because they have little feet. Um, like, there were a couple of times when I was playing Nyssa that I ended up going, um, no, no, girlfriend, come here, because I couldn't get up something. 
and I don't know if it's actually because they are smaller or if it just felt easier or because I can see around them when they're smaller. Anyway, um, Alva also had mostly the elven armor. Um, I did that with Alva and with Asya. So apparently my elven mages uh, were the ones that always had the elf armor because I didn't do that with Ravanian and I didn't do that with um, Ilari. I guess I kind of have with my other elf, but anyway. Um, did I have extra armor for you? I did. So he went from the keeper robe, which was also technically what I had Asya in, but it looks different on a woman, to the uh, sentinel plate because it's fancy and it's shiny and it looks cool. Um, I gave him a... He was, he was the first one where I was like, you have a non-game backstory because I have played too many elves. Um... So, decided that uh, Ravanian's twin, um, that they were separated at birth. So, uh, Ravanian was in a clan when he was growing up, and I want to see your beautiful face. Um, Ravanian grew up in the clan, and then fucked off when he became an adult, whereas Alva did basically the opposite. They were separated at birth. He was kidnapped by uh, Tevinter slavers, um, had a real shitty life, was the pretty slave until he got that lovely scar you see on his right cheekbone. Thank you for cooperating and turning your head randomly. Um, and then he ended up being less the pretty one, more just kind of the 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 ghost. He He ended up going from, look at my pretty elven slave, to look at how sneaky my elven slave is. He refilled your wine and now he's across the room and you didn't even notice him. He's very sneaky. Um, because, partly because of that and partly because he's just full of suppressed rage, I decided he's a necromancer. Um, he escaped to Venter um, as, as an adult, went to find a clan, joined up with them around adulthood, and earned his Valisleen, because because I can't have an elf without it, basically. Um, he is very friendly with Solas, which is partly because of the necromancer thing, because, you know, when, when you have a necromancer, they're going to be talking to spirits a lot. What does Solas do but talk to spirits a lot? Um, so... All of that shit. And then he uh, romanced Dorian because I'm weak. That was that was basically me going, but I miss Dorian. He's so sweet. I am weak. So, that. Um, yeah, that's that's Alva. He's like, he's mostly, he's mostly a fuck you character. I love him. Like... Oh, and I didn't go into the Valisleen either. Um, someone on Tumblr put together a like a, a a compilation of all of the Valisleen, the what's it called? Blood writing, that's what they call it. Um someone put together a compilation of all of the Valisleen and which elven gods they probably go with. Um let me see if I can find in a different window. Um so Ravanian had Mythal in green. Mythal. So, everybody knows Mythal now. Um, that is that is somewhat fitting for Ravanian, because he is... Uh, Mythal was also supposed to be uh, all about justice. Justice and fairness. And Ravanian is very concerned with justice and fairness. His twin was kidnapped and made a slave, and then he went to live... He personally went to go live in alienages for a while to try to meet up with his brother, and they didn't find each other until way, way later. But anyway, um, all of that. Um, Ilaris is June, the god of the craft. Uh, oh no, that's a lie. That's a lie. I just lied to you. Um, Ravanian had Gilanan. Or did he? Hang on. Now I'm going to reload and look at your face. 
they look very similar. Um, Mithal's kind of looks like a tree, and Gilanan's um, is just very swirly, and it's it's a little bit less uh, all over your face. I remember one of my characters had uh, Mithal, but I think it might be Lunin, who is my fifth elf. All right, beautiful. Let me see your face. There we go. We have... Nope, that's Gilanon. I lied. Um, so, Gilanon, um, mother of the Hala. I, I, I had a reason why that was fitting, but I can't remember what it was at the moment. Um... Anyway, moving on. Uh, let's see. Asya had Falundin, and if you recall, he was one of the uh, gods of the afterlife. It was uh, Falundin and Dirtham, and no. No, hang on. I had this memorized. Falandine, elven god of death and fortune who guides the dead to the beyond. So, yes, I was right. It, it was Falandine and Dirthalman. Okay, I thought I thought there were the twin death gods here. So, that was that was extremely fitting at first because I was like, yeah, sure, twins. And, y yeah, you know, the, the, the death thing is, is... That's a really complicated... I'm not going to explain that part because that's not going to make any sense by the time it comes out of my face. But anyway, the twins thing was really fitting when I only had one pair of twins. Um, and then Dirthamen, I actually, I actually put the one for Dirthamen on Alva's face, um, which is fitting because he is also a twin and a necromancer. So that one worked out really well. Um, the next character I made was Miriam because I was kind of like, eh. I've played every race except a human. I guess I might as well. <coughs> Excuse me. And then the other thing that I did uh, with her was I mentioned all of my non-game backstories. Um, she's elf-blooded. That's the that's the backstory. Um, she is the daughter of a. Marcher, Noble, and a Tevinter Altus, as far as anyone knows, except the actual truth of the matter is that her father impregnated one of their slaves. And out came Miriam. Um, she is a warrior. Um, her birth mother and stepmother were both dreamers. Yes, her stepmother was the Tevinter. Um, her father was the Marcher Noble, uh, who owned land in Ostwick. Her mother hated her. Her, her, her stepmother, I mean. The what? the woman that she grew up calling her mother, um, hated her. She assumed initially it was because she was not a mage, um, It is actually because she was not actually that woman's daughter, but the uh, daughter of an elven slave. Um, because, oh my god, nobles, no. Um, she is... What haven't I said? Um, I mean, she looks really good in blue and gray and, you know, stuff. Um, oh, she was a reaver. I didn't mention that yet. Um, I gave her the Reaver specialization because it was fun, mostly. Um, I noticed that, unfortunately, a lot of really rich colors wash her out, so I stuck with the, the like, grays and blues and things. Um, she romanced Cullen, and I realized that he reminds me of a particular individual on some level, and I got really gay about it. Um, He's just 
incredibly sweet and it's just it hurts me it hurts me um so she's totally 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 head over heels in love with Cullen um also I forgot that I gave her the dragon hunter armor but it was it's so boss um um battle master coat why does that it's definitely the dragon hunter armor though it just anyway um i also later uh made her a um an older brother like i i i had conceptually decided that she had an older brother that her parents didn't hate but i didn't make him yet as of right now i have basically written his entire story and not played him which is the opposite of how i usually do this because i go yeah i'll play the character and then i'll figure out what i should do with them and that's not what i did with ruben because i'm still in the middle of two playthroughs right now um lunan is my let's see eighth character my fifth elf they are a um an assassin specialization um they are a tiny non-binary elven assassin that will absolutely fuck you up um very very sneaky um in in a physical and uh interpersonal way so lunan is the kind of person who can like navigate all the all the diplomacy right alongside josephine and not fuck anything up and be totally completely fine and then also end the meeting with murder if it is warranted in their mind um also romance josephine um, I have not actually finished this playthrough, so this this one was like I I got the game and then I bought a Wii from someone who is probably going to be watching this later. Hi, Mari. Um, I bought a Wii and like eight games, and I got distracted by Zelda, and then I I I never finished this playthrough, so. Um, Lunan is currently in the Empress de Lyon, um, <clears throat> and right before I started this stream, I finished up the, uh, the main quest line in Empress de Lyon, um, or at least, at least the, uh, the retrieval portion, like, I murdered all the, um, all the knight special, the Red Templar knights, and then freed all the guys that were st stuck in the cages um Luna and I love you please load um my only uh currently my only non-binary character but of course because this is Dragon Age they give you limited appearances so I I, I went with the 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 lady build for Lunan because it was it fit better effectively i liked the uh the voice that i was able to choose because lunan lunan i went with the like the american female voice because it's a little bit less floaty and and soft so lunan i also gave um you know most of most of my characters um or most of my elves anyway have been dark skinned with the light colored Sorry, I, I said that backwards. They have been light-skinned with the dark Valisleen, whereas Lunan is dark-skinned and has the light-colored Valisleen. And I went with uh, Andril, who is the goddess of the hunt, which is, you know, pretty fitting for an assassin, I thought. Um, I just, I really like how the Valisleen came out on Lunan. I haven't totally thought through how they would have done that because it's it's literally called blood writing it's they they imply that it is just magical tattoos so i mean if it's magic maybe they can just make it different i don't know but most of them look like an overlay and 
Lunin's does not. Um, <clears throat> did I mention that they are uh, romancing Josephine? Um, they're they're also the kind of individual who will um, support Josephine directly in diplomatic meetings and shit like that, and then surreptitiously threaten anyone that they might want to threaten outside of that. Um, none of this was actually made for Lunan, except for the elven armor, because of course. Um, I really, really love this elven armor. It is effectively exactly the same thing that uh, Meryl was wearing. Uh, try to catch the fight. Bye, alien! I see you. There will be more. You can always go uh, watch the rest of this later if you want. I'm probably going to be uh, finishing introducing my characters and then playing through a little bit of Haven with Ilari. Um, Lunin is the last one that I've made so far. But um, So. I watch. Okay, well, I will see you soon then. Or you'll see me. Something like that. Bye, alien. Have fun at con. Um, so, yes, Romance Josephine supports Josephine, um, will, will absolutely threaten people that they feel need to be threatened outside of meetings, and then, um, best friends with Dorian and Bull, and here's the fun part that I didn't actually mention, um, Lunan is the older half-sibling of Miriam. This I decided as I was playing Lunan, because I was like, yeah, sure, Miriam has an older brother that her parents enjoy, that they, that, you know, that they like, who is a mage, and he owns some of their land in Tevinter, because his, you know, their, um, they share a father, and, and this one, his mother is actually his mother. Um, so she was like, yeah, sure, you can, you can control this part of my land. And he was like, thanks, Ma. Did not have any idea, um, about Lunan. Knew that Miriam was not his full sibling. But Lunan shares a mother with Miriam. So the, uh, the Tevinter Dreamer, the Tevinter Altus, is um, Reuben's mother, Miriam's stepmother. The uh, the marcher noble, the guy that owned land in Ostwick and went, no, you can have this, Miriam, um, is their father, Reuben and Miriam's father. Um, Miriam's mother was an elven slave. Also, Lunan's mother. Also, a dreamer, or whatever the elves would have called a dreamer. Um, so, Lunan, and obviously this is non-game backstory because that's what I do. Um, they, they were raised by uh, their mother. So, you know, grew up sort of half enslaved, half no, let's get out of here. I haven't, I haven't fully uh, figured out exactly how that would have worked because I, I did decide that um, Lunan themselves was not one of Miriam's family's slaves, but I haven't fully figured out exactly how that would have worked. It is entirely possible that Lunan was uh, raised by their father outside of that entire situation. I haven't totally figured that out. But what I have figured out is that when Miriam was three, I think I decided, let me, hang on, I wrote this down because I'm that guy. Um, ba -da -ba -ba. Yes, Miriam was three, um, which would have put Lunan at nine. So um, their mother, Ashlyn, Ashlyn tried to kidnap Miriam 
because she was like, this is my child, and I don't want her raised by my masters. Um, so she was like, I'm going to take my daughter and run, and then she was killed in the attempt. Lunin, thankfully, was with their father. Um, meaning their own father, not Miriam's father. Um, because Miriam's father would have been like, Welp, you're here! Um, sort of sort of the, uh, the kind of person that was awful enough to have slaves, not awful enough to automatically be like, You're a child, I can use you. Um, so... Awful, shitty individual but with, like, the tiniest level of compassion for children. So, effectively, what's running our country right now? Oh, wait, they don't even have that. Did I say that out loud? Anyway, moving on. Um, so that's that's pretty much Lunin. Ruben, on the other hand, I haven't made Ruben yet. Ruben is probably going to be my next playthrough after I finish up uh, replaying Ilari. But Ruben is the older brother, older than both of them, as a matter of fact. Um, so at, at the time of Inquisition, I decided that um, Ilaria and Asia would have been about 25. Ravanian and Alva would have been about 31. Lavi's 36, Nissa's 30. Um, Miriam is the baby of the group. She is 23 when the... Uh, the events of Inquisition are happening, and uh, Reuben is 10 years older than she is, so he's 33. Uh, Lunin is somewhere in the middle at 29. But um, Reuben is kind of... Reuben is the kind of character where you're like... He, he has his fingers in so many pies, you can't tell what he's doing at any given time. <coughs> Sorry, dry throat. Um, Reuben, Reuben is the kind of character that would confuse even Leliana. Like, he and Leliana and Josephine and Bull all have a great deal of respect for each other, because he confuses the daylights out of them, and they can't initially figure out how to take him. Um, Reuben is fully human. Um, he, um, he's gonna be a rift mage. He is very, he's very distant, which is part of the reason nobody can figure out what they can, what they should think about him, because he's, he's, he's very logical. He tends to think of people as resources instead of friends. So he's gonna look at, you know, Iron Bull, and, and you're gonna, you get, so, spoilers, you, you, you can make the decision to kill the Chargers. I think most of the folks watching this can uh, have, have read that somewhere along the line by now. So, Reuben is going to come to that decision and look at it very differently than Miriam, for example. Miriam came to that decision and went, Oh my god, no, I can't do that to Bull and Krem and Dalish and... So she made the decision based on the people. Reuben is going to make the decision based on the resources. Because Reuben is going to look at this and go, okay, I have no idea how an alliance with the Kunari would go. This has literally never happened before. It could be great, or it could turn around and bite me in the ass. I know what I'm getting from Bull. And I know what I'm getting from the Chargers. It would be really stupid to gamble away. It's he's he's the sort of person that uh, risk versus reward. Depending on the reward, he is more likely to uh, go with the lesser risk. Effectively based on probability, because he's looking at the Kunari and going, you are a fucking wild card, I can't trust you. Also, he's Tevinter. He, he, he has absolutely no trust for Kunari. He grew up in Tevinter. He's probably a little bit racist, it's a thing. 
Um, I mean, just, just listen to Dorian talking about slaves at the beginning of the game. There's a reason all of my elves kind of go, excuse you, when they first meet him. Um, <clears throat> Reuben, Reuben would be a master player of the great game. He confuses the shit out of Leliana and Bull initially. Josephine is the only one that knows how to handle him because Josephine deals almost exclusively in appearances. So she goes with appearances, and then the more she talks to him, the more she's like, is this how he actually is? This might be how he actually is. Leliana, Bull, you... No, you guys don't know either. Okay, I'm going to continue doing my job. Um... So, super sneaky. He's the kind of individual that, like I said, nobody nobody can figure out how to take him because he's got his fingers in so many pies. Um, he has spent his life basically looking at his Tevinter family and going, uh, no, no, I'm going to keep you from doing that. He, he has spent his life undermining his family in the sneakiest possible way so that he never gets connected to them getting fucked up, basically. Um, he and Miriam... Like, they know each other kind of, sort of, a little bit, but they don't really know each other because she inherited her father's land in Ostwick. He inherited his mother's land in Tevinter. So she is initially afraid that he's part of the Venatori when he's been kind of... He's been working against them in such a way that nothing can be traced back to him because that's just how he operates. Um... He initially did not know about Lunan. He figured it out later. He is... Um, oh, oh my god. Uh, so I forgot something when I was talking about Alva. Um, da -da -da -da. Once we were in a piece. Okay. Yeah, P.S. I uh, will probably end up singing at some point. Um, because I'm the nerd that listens to the Inquisition soundtrack, and I know most of the songs by heart. So... Da -na -na -na. There we go. So, Alva. My, my my lovely little albino angry elf. He, I mentioned he, there we go, sorry. That was, uh, press the wrong button. Press the share button by accident. Um, so he was a slave in Tevinter. What I neglected to mention because I planned this later um, was that Alva was a slave in Miriam's parents household so he was um <clears throat> hang on where am i do, do 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 he's eight years older than miriam so when miriam was kidnapped he would have been 11 and reuben is only two years older than he is. So when, you know, he was he was probably acquired around the same time, possibly because of this kidnap attempt, because, you know, Miriam's, uh, Ashlyn, Miriam's mother, Miriam and Lunan's mother, was killed in the attempt. So they probably went, well, I'm down a slave, I'm gonna buy this guy. Except he was a child at the time. Um, which kind of goes against my thought that uh, Miriam's father would be like, eh, I guess you're a child and you don't have to work yet. I guess he got over that. He's Tevinter, he's an asshole. Anyway, um, he is he is a racist Tevinter, uh, Tevinter Magister, who is Altus, not Magister. I'm sorry, Dorian. Um, he's a... He's a racist to Venteraltus, who has never gone against that shit. Um, I haven't fully figured out why Reuben would go against it, except that, you know, I don't want to play an actual evil character. Um, 
but I haven't fully figured out uh, his motives for that. Anyway, so this poor sucker, Alva. Alva was enslaved by Miriam's family. So he was acquired uh, sometime around um, Miriam's kidnapping when she was a toddler. He was 11. He was eventually... Uh, basically, Reuben, Reuben and Alva would have been... I suspect that uh, the reason that Reuben has to not be a piece of shit is basically that he looked at Alva and was like, oh, you're a person and you're my age, which he's not. He's younger, but <clears throat> not significantly. So Reuben probably looked at Alva and went, um, okay, you're a person and you're a slave in my household and, and, and you're a person. You are a person. Oh my God. Um, and, you know, took that and decided that he was just going to go against his family um, and try to figure out what to do from there. And it is also entirely possible that Alva, having sort of an ally in the, uh, the hierarchy of the family, probably went, oh, okay, there... There are people here that don't suck. This 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 could be worse. I might be able to do this. I might be able to get out of this. And it is uh I'm just I'm just deciding right now that Ruben was part of the reason that Alva was able to get out um and then meet back up with Ravanian eventually. Anyway, um so that's my characters as it stands right now. Um Like I said, uh, I'm gonna be playing through uh, Ilari because because he's 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 my son. Um, playing through with Ilari, uh, I'm gonna try to do most of the quests on screen and the crafting and shit off screen because I am indecisive and ridiculous about crafting. Um, crafting and upgrades will be in between, and then I can kind of come back and catch you guys up with what I decided on. Uh, at the beginning of any given stream because like I said otherwise you're going to be sitting here for an hour watching me go back and forth between like Bloodstone and Silverite and you're going to be like can you move on so I'm not going to do that to you um so that's that's basically all I wanted to do for the introductions of course it took an hour because I'm I'm entirely too attached to my characters um so at this point I'm gonna go back to Ilari and I'm gonna try to take care of some of the um, quests in Haven. So. Um, what I did in the stream on Monday was basically I just got to Haven um, after fucking up irrevocably the first time I <laughs> I ended up restarting so thank you to everyone that actually sat through that because I am a mess um, I was a little bit distracted by trying to do the streaming thing um, but so I did the character creation went through all of the backstory nonsense, got to Haven, and had the conversation with Cassandra and Leliana where they're like, um, yeah, so we're we're declaring the Inquisition. Are you in? And, you know, obviously, you have to be in, because that's how this works. Oh, and I can level. Let's do this quickly. Um, gonna try to... Fighting dirty. Yes. Okay. Return to Haven's Chantry. Not that we're not right this second. If you're here to clean, Hess can get you a bucket and a broom. Anyone calls you knife here, come to me. Oh, you're him. 
Thren. Inquisition quartermaster. You are a terrible person, Thren. If you find You're an elf, so you must be here to clean. I'd appreciate you bringing it in. Douche. What do you do here? I make sure the Inquisition troops have food in their bellies and iron in their hands. Yeah, what do you do here? That's that's how you ask people why they're here. Marching all day to fight the demons. Turns out heroes need You don't just assume everyone else. Thren. How does someone end up as quartermaster for the Inquisition? I served for Eldon under Ten Logan McTeer. That was your first mistake. This world has ever seen. After they all turned on him at Denerim, though, there wasn't much use for people who had They all them. turned on him at Denerim. King Bullshit. Alistair offered my services to the Inquisition. Probably to get rid of me. What did I do the first time? I forget. I have never said I'm glad you believe in him, because frankly, fuck Loghain. With that attitude, I can't imagine how you made enemies in Denerim. People just don't want to hear the truth. <laughs> I was at Ostagar, and I know what really happened. King Cain yeah. overextended his position, and the Grey Wardens were too late lighting a signal. Yeah. Following the original plan would have gotten that. everyone killed. Turn Loghain made the right decision. I, I apologize. Sister Liliana told me I shouldn't talk about this. Just forget it. Gladly. I have a lot of emotions about uh, Dragon Age Origins and Turn Loghain, because... Logan is a douche. Um, We're thin on I am. I but have not read, but I am aware of the contents of Stolen Throne. So yes, I understand that that was partly due to uh, character building nonsense. However, if you have someone that go that it it bothers me that they decided that the way to do that was. Um, One of my boys will take the materials or jot down what you found. Effectively, to put him in exactly the same situation for a different reason. And then make him react in that way. This is not going to make absolutely any sense if you uh, are not aware of Stolen Throne. So. Hi, Varric. So, now that Cassandra's out of earshot, are you holding up all right? I mean, you go from being the most wanted <coughs> criminal in Thetis to joining the armies of the faithful. Most people would have spread that out over more than one day. And this is the part where I remind you, Ilari is incredibly, incredibly emotional. And pretty, but emotional. I don't even want to think about how many lives were lost on that mountaintop. A lot. A lot of good men and women didn't make it out of there. For days now, we've been staring at the breach, watching demons and maker knows what fall out of it. Bad for morale would be an understatement. I still can't believe anyone was in there and lived. If it was that bad, why did you stay? Cassandra said you were free to go. I like to think I'm as selfish and irresponsible as the next guy, but this... Thousands of people died on that mountain. I was almost one of them, and now there's a hole in the sky. Even I can't walk away and just leave that to sort itself out. Well, you could. Uh, I remember how two of these go. I don't remember how the third goes. And I'm not sure that Ilari would necessarily go, Yeah, sure, I was lucky. But... Yeah. It's pure luck that I escaped. Good luck or bad? <laughs> you might want to consider running at the first opportunity. I've written enough tragedies to recognize where this is going. Heroes are everywhere. I've seen that. But the hole in the sky... That's beyond heroes. We're going to need a miracle. I'll work on it. I 
learned child is a blessing upon his parents and onto the maker. Oh yeah, and that's the other thing. I completely abuse the search function. I mess I mentioned this yesterday. I'm not kidding. Hi, Flessa. Can I get you anything? What can you tell me about this area? Adan is Haven's apothecary. He's been making potions and tending to the wounded as best he can. Parrot is the Inquisition Smith. Whatever he can make you, Thren the Quartermaster can probably find. And for anything fancier, you can try buying from Segret. His prices aren't too high. Yes? Oh, Segret's a dick. Nave. She studies beasts and things, as I understand. Thank you, Flessa. Farewell. Goodbye. Mm, I should talk to Solus. Everybody uh, keeps. Everybody used to say, you know, that they that Solus hates everyone. I never had that problem because all you have to do to make Solus like you is talk to him, and let him talk your ear off, which is kind of what I do anyway, because I was like, yeah, sure, I... let's talk about magic. Let's do this. The Chosen of Andraste, a blessed hero sent to save us all. Am I riding in on a shining steed? I would have suggested a griffon, but sadly they're extinct. Joke as you will, posturing is necessary. I've journeyed deep into the fade in ancient ruins and battlefields to see the dreams of lost civilizations. I've watched as hosts of spirits clashed to reenact the bloody past in ancient wars both famous and forgotten. Every great war has its heroes. I'm just curious what kind you'll be. What do you mean ruins and battlefields? Any building strong enough to withstand the rigors of time as a history. Every battlefield is steeped in death. Both attract spirits. They press against the veil, weakening the barrier between our worlds. When I dream in such places, I go deep into the fade. I can find memories no other living being has ever seen. You fall asleep in the middle of ancient ruins. Isn't that dangerous? I do set wards. And if you leave food out for the giant spiders, they are usually content to live and let live. Giant spiders make me sad because I like spiders. I don't like killing them. I've never heard of anyone going so far into the Fade. That's extraordinary. Thank you. It's not a common field of study for obvious reasons. Not so flashy as throwing fire or lightning. <laughs> the thrill of finding remnants of a thousand-year-old dream? I would not trade it for anything. I will stay there. Research nerd. At least until the breach has been closed. Yes. Was that in doubt? I am an apostate surrounded by Chantry forces in the middle of a mage rebellion. Cassandra has been accommodated, but you understand my caution. Cassandra trusts you. She won't let anyone put you into a circle against your will. Thank you. I appreciate the thought. <laughs> but now let us hope either the mages or the Templars... He's like, thanks, but I figure you're, you're wrong. <laughs> I'm gonna look around. That's right, Solus has a loot in here too. Which, I mean, if you're as old as Solus and you don't take the time to play an instrument, you you you, you probably get pretty bored. Ah, there we go. I'm like there was something in here I remember. The Randy Dowager Quarterly, which gets funnier when you realize that this is Dorian's cabin once he gets here. The Apothecary. Adan! I love Adan. Thank you for hurrying with the potions. We have so many injured. We'll get them back on their feet, sister. Don't you worry. Adan's great. <laughs> Look who's back from the dead. Again. I don't recall meeting you before. 
I'd be surprised if you did. You weren't particularly coherent. Someone had to patch you up after you staggered out of making those wear, though. So, you're welcome. I didn't realize. Thank you. Yeah. Well, you can pay me back by fixing the world. I'll try. Name's Adan. I'm in charge of keeping our little band here stocked with potions and elixirs. Not that Seeker Pentagast seems to care whether we've got the supplies to actually do that. I love this. For a healer, you don't seem particularly nurturing. I'm not a healer. I'm an alchemist who's forced to play Mother Hen. You want something to burst into flame on contact with the air? Done. Gladly. Patching up wounded soldiers is a waste of my time and talents. But there are a few around who can help. How are your people holding up? There's no shortage of work. That's for damn sure. Is there anything I can do to help out? We're fine as far as raw labor goes. You've more important things to do than tend to me. I only wish I'd been able to find Master Tajin's notes. Old bastard was working on something special. He died at the Conclave, and his notes weren't here. Been too busy dealing with the wounded to look for them. How do I go about having potions made? Just take a look there and tell me what you'd like. Find a recipe for something better, I can make that too. Sweet. That's just gonna show me the tables. Ah, and notes. Alright. I know. La la la. Yes, I know. Do I actually... Well, I have nine elf roots, so I might as well. And done. Yay! Upgrade potions. I'm not gonna actually do this. Because... Not that I can to begin with. I could if I had a fuck ton of uh, elf root, but... I am not far enough in the game to have that much elf root. <coughs> There was something over there. Loot. Ugh, oh, Nugskin. So, um... I have a friend who was playing through Inquisition and made all of her armor out of Nugskin and then uh, went to... And I guess, I guess she had gotten most of it from, like, Snoofleurs or whatever. And then she actually killed a nug and someone disapproved. <laughs> she was like, I'm wearing nug skin armor. But you didn't disapprove until I killed it. Why? So. Pro tip. Be careful. <laughs> Be careful when you are gathering nug skin. Alright, so. Next thing. Get rid of the threat remains for now. Uh, passing notes. There's a log stand somewhere near where you find Tajin's notes. Um, the nave is going to be when I go back into the chantry. Speak with the smith. That's right. I haven't talked to Harrod yet. stuff. And no stuff. And the other one is where you wake up. And I'm quite sure that there was no stuff left. Yep. Okay. I love that there is a, uh, a cage in there for one of Leliana's ravens. Or at least I hope it was for one of Leliana's ravens. It's a bird cage. 
Okay, let's talk to the smith, and then I can talk to... If the oh, goodness. Wants to field a decent cavalry, it needs better so I don't know if uh, you guys are aware of this, but... When you hit the golden nug uh, after your first playthrough, all of the... All of the um, all of the all of the things that you have uh, attained in your past playthroughs just start scrolling through on the bottom of the screen, and I let it scroll through once, and I believe it took five minutes. So I'm gonna do that last, probably, or or potentially once I uh, log off the stream. Because I'm not kidding, it takes forever. One of those. Whichever you are, I hope the streak is broken. A man can dream. How did you come to be here? Long story. Not worth telling twice. Right, that's the thing that I said the first time, dumbass. Who outfits the Inquisition soldiers? Not me. I've got work to do. Can't be passing a sword to every blighter who signs up. If you want to help the troops, talk to Thren, the quartermaster. She'll set up requisitions. Does the Inquisition not have supplies to make armor or weapons? Tough convincing traders to haul up here. Impossible to get them to risk the rare stuff, so that's on you. Fair enough. What can you and your team make here? Arms and armor. We work iron to blighted dragon bone, if you've got it. Our designs are simple, but they get the job done. You want something fancy? Bring your own design. We'll see what we can do. I have so many fancy designs. Can you help improve my arms and armor? Yes. You find a new piece, a pauldron or greaves, we'll take care of you. You can't just slap a new ill on your sword in the field. Bring it here, we'll make sure it's done right and proper. Not yet he can't, anyway. I mean, if he I want something, is going to be an make? artificer, so, Start you know. Simple. Something to keep you safe. Take a look at it on the table there, and we can promise talk. I'm kidding. You'll need materials. We should have what you want just outside. All right. Goodbye. See you, bro. Right. Uh, stuff. Give. Stuff. Give. Ha 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 And then they imply that this is Harrod's place, but Blackwall stands in front of it later. Nug! I love the noises Nugs make. They're so cute. Okay. I will do the golden Nug thing later. Talk to Colin and Cassandra. Whoever I come across first here. Maybe. Don't tell me neither of them spawned. Oh no, neither of them spawned because they're still fucking bad up in the chantry, aren't they? Never mind. We cannot stay here. Why not? Talk to them later. What does that even mean anymore? Not much. Yes. I'd like your take on the Templar Order. It's a shadow of what it was. Where once we both protected all people from the dangers of magic, we now posture and grab at power. One day, I hope the circles are again sanctuaries where mages can practice their craft. And that's the kind of Templar we want. The only kind of Templar we want. You're not going to rejoin the Order. When the temple went up, your forces rescued those few of us still alive. 
My life is a debt I intend to repay, however I can. Do you have any idea what caused the explosion? No, I'm just a recruit. Belief and faith doesn't get you closer to the important meetings. Though, that distance did save my life. I will talk to you later. Walk in the Maker's grace. Yeah. Oh yeah, um... <laughs> I mean no disrespect to any Christians that come onto my stream, but I tend to uh, refer to Andraste as Lady Jesus because that is effectively what they did. They, they took Jesus and made him a lady and the maker's wife instead of the son of God. So, um, I am, I am somewhat dismissive of my own, uh, personal experiences with the Catholic here. church, but I have nothing against, uh, folks who follow it. So, if I come off a little harsh, I, I apologize in advance. Um, the other thing is, I'm not playing a, a faithful character, so... I may sound a bit uh, dismissive, because a fictional religion I am totally okay with being dismissive of. It generally just comes out as, I don't want nothing to do with your lady Jesus. Um, but hey, I mean, it's a week and a half until Passover slash Easter, unless you're Greek Orthodox. Okay, so that was Master Tajin's notes. There's a logging stand around here somewhere that I have to find, which I th thought was basically in the same area. Show me the map. No, I think the logging stand was somewhere over here, wasn't it? What's that? Way, way off. All right. That's fine. We're gonna, we're gonna go. Find me a logging stand. Uh, nope. That direction, because that, that other one was how you get back to the quartermaster. I knew that, I swear. That's the one downside to them going with the uh, minimalist uh, heads-up display, is that uh, I get a little turned around on the map sometimes. And then I go, nope, that's north. Grove. No. Yes. Kind of. No. That's all fruit. I always run by it. There we go. Huzzah! And now we run back. You also have the option to uh, take out some rams when you're out here, and I believe there is a druffalo also that you can uh, beat up, but the uh, the druffalo is... that was a little rough, not gonna lie. Um, because the druffalo will attack you back, and uh, tends to win. exactly where the Druffalo is, but again, I'm not going to go there, 
because I don't want Ilari to die in the most embarrassing manner possible. Nug. Back to Master Harrod. Right, you want me to craft Mr. something, don't you? I'll do that in between once I'm all caught up with my schematics and things. I found a logging stand. Yay. You're welcome. Nice work with those supplies. The smiths can use them to fit our troops with better gear. Might not affect you much, but our recruits will have better chances next time some monster flies out of a rift. Yay. I'm out. Farewell. Make a go with you. All right. So let me double check here. Um, I have to go find a Don before I do that. Go talk to my my very favorite cranky alchemist. Nuh. Jump over a guy. You're back. And in one piece. I am. You said you thought Master Tajan was working on something special. If it helps, I found his notes. <laughs> the old codger was on the edge of a breakthrough here, but he couldn't see it. You want some of these mixed up? You just give the word. Thanks, bro. Farewell. All right. Know thy enemy. Talk to my knave. Have some armor made. Modify some armor. So, um... I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bounce back up into the Chantry, and then I'm going to uh, wrap this up for the morning, because I would like to uh, go make lunch. But So, go talk to Maneve, see what everybody has to say in the Chantry, and then that will be it for today. Does it trouble you? <laughs> He's like, it didn't work. I thought it would work. If it wasn't enough to close the breach, what use is it? You did everything we asked of you. He's like, I know, it but it wasn't didn't enough. Work. What's important is that your mark is now stable, as is the breach. You've given us time, and Solas believes a second attempt might succeed, provided the Mark has more power. The same level of power used to open the breach in the first place. That is not easy to come by. Couldn't that kind of power just make things worse? <laughs> and people call me a pessimist. Oh, you have no idea, Cassandra. May I present Commander Cullen, leader of the Inquisition's forces. Such as they are, we lost many soldiers in the valley, and I fear many more before this is through. This is Lady Josephine Montelier, our ambassador and chief diplomat. Anderan Atishan. You speak Elven. You just heard the entirety of it, I'm afraid. And of course, you know Sister Leliana. My position here involves a degree of... She is our spy master. <laughs> yes. Tactfully put, Cassandra. That's, that's kind of like... It means keeper of illusions, or liar. It means liar. Pleased to meet you all. 
I mentioned that your mark needs more power to close the breach for good. Which means we must approach the rebel mages for help. And I still disagree. The Templars could serve just as well. We need power, Commander. Enough magic poured into that mark. Might destroy us all. Templars could suppress the breach, weaken it, so... Pure speculation. I was a Templar. It's all speculation. I know what they're capable of. Unfortunately, neither group will even speak to us yet. The Chantry has denounced the Inquisition, and you specifically. <laughs> they still think I'm guilty. That is not the entirety of it any longer. Some are calling you, a Dalish elf, the Herald of Andraste. That frightens the Chantry. The remaining clerics have declared it blasphemy, and we heretics for harboring you. Chancellor Roderick's doing, no doubt. It limits our options. Approaching the Mages or Templars for help is currently out of the question. Just how am I the Herald of Andraste? People saw what you did at the Temple, how you stopped the breach from growing. They have also heard about the woman seen in the rift when we first found you. They believe that was Andraste. Even if we tried to stop that view from spreading, which we have not. <laughs> the point is, everyone is talking about you. It's quite the title, isn't it? How do you feel about that? Well, I'm not going to say he likes it, because he is probably neutral at best on the Chantry. But, uh... It's a little unsettling. <laughs> I'm sure the Chantry would agree. People are desperate for a sign of hope. For some, you're that sign. And to others, a symbol of everything that's gone wrong. Will the Chantry attack us? With what? They have only words at their disposal. And yet, they may bury us with them. There is something you can do. A Chantry cleric by the name of Mother Giselle has asked to speak to you. She is not far, and knows those involved far better than I. Her assistance could be invaluable. I'll see what she has to say. You will find Mother Giselle tending to the wounded in the hinterlands near Redcliffe. Look for other opportunities to expand the Inquisition's influence while you're there. We need agents to extend our reach beyond this valley, and you're better suited than anyone to recruit them. He's like In me. the meantime, let's think of other options. I won't leave this all to the Herald. Cassandra's great. Okay. So what I think I'm gonna do is, uh open up my path to the hinterlands not actually go yet any word nothing yet no it's not going to give me that okay i was going to talk to minnie that's okay i love harding she's so great Liliana's creepy mohawk ravens. They would probably be less creepy if they had at least made the bizarre feather mohawk the same color as the rest of their feathers. But, you know, they didn't do that. Ah, there we go. No, I am not going to, to travel to the hinterlands right this second. I'm going to go talk to Minave. Um, the other thing that I am probably going to do uh, in between streams is most of the War Table stuff. I will try to uh, keep those mostly cannot remain in if you can't prove it was founded on um, between streams uh, because the, those, I'm, I'm not the most decisive individual. 
But allow me to so there there will be times where I'll be like, yeah, sure, I'm gonna send. Uh, who do I send? What is this gonna do? So I'm gonna do that in between streams, um, so that you guys don't have to worry about it so much. And the rightful owner of Haven. How do I do land Justinia these lands for pilgrimage? This inquisition is not a beneficiary of this arrangement. This is the first I've heard of Haven having an owner outside the Chantry. My wife, Lady Machin of Denver, has claimed to Haven by ancient treaty with the monarchs of Ferelde. We were honored to lend its use to divine Justinia. She is a... She was a woman of supreme merit. I will not let an upstart order remain on her holy grounds. People have been injured. You can't just turn them out onto the snow. And who benefits if they stay? Divine Justinia, Marquis. The Inquisition, not the Chantry, is sheltering the pilgrims who mourn her. Why is the Chantry ignoring the faithful? Because it remains in shock. <sighs> we face it's a dark like time, your losing Grace. Divine Justinia would not want her passing to divide us. She would, in main fact, leader trust us to forge new alliances them. to the benefit of all. Imagine that. No matter how strange they might seem. I'll think on it, Lady Montillier. The Inquisition might stay in the meanwhile. Do the Durellions actually have a claim on this place? His Grace's position is not so strong as he presents it. Despite their Ferelden relations, the Durellions are Orlesians. If the Marquis wishes to claim Haven, Empress Selene must negotiate with the Ferelden on his behalf. Her current concerns are a bit larger than minor property disputes. <laughs> I apologize for the intrusion. I didn't realize you were meeting with the Marquis. You did little harm. In truth, the debate was most beneficial as practice for those to come. You expect more people in Haven? Undoubtedly. <laughs> And oh, each honey. visitor will spread the story of the Inquisition after they depart. An ambassador should ensure the tale is as complimentary as possible. And this is why we need Josephine. May I ask what brought you to work for the Inquisition? Sister Leliana approached me. We've been acquainted for quite some time. For better or worse, being the Inquisition's diplomat has become as interesting as she promised. <laughs> What sort of dealings have you had with nobility? For some years, I was the royally appointed court ambassador from Antiva to Orle. The nobility of Thedas is a rather singular sphere. Those I'm not acquainted with, I know through reputation. The Inquisition is lucky to have you as an advocate, Lady Montillier. Thank you. Let us hope so. Thedas's politics have become agitated as of late. I hope to guide us down smoother paths. But please excuse me. I've much work to do before the day is done. Oh, look. And let's talk to Maneve. You're the Herald. Or, well, the one they're calling the Herald, anyway. I hope the Inquisition can restore order soon. I never really wanted to leave the Circle. My name is Maneve. I research demons and other creatures. Seeker, Pentagast, and I use what I find to help the soldiers fight them. You said you were a mage? No, just an apprentice. I was never very good at magic. I've got just enough talent to be a danger to other people. But when the mages rebelled, people like me had nowhere to go. The Templars would have killed us. Luckily, Seeker Pentagast took me in, along with the Tranquil I was protecting. I don't think I ever fully registered that uh, distinction, because you just you kind of you kind of think of mages. If you're anything like me, you just think of mages as you know this is your natural state. And then she goes, "No, no, I was an apprentice." Like there's I'm a difference. That even an apprentice mage wouldn't join the rebellion. I don't like using magic to fight. I'm not good at it either. I like studying. I like performing rituals that helped us unlock the secrets of the veil. I liked having the Templars around to keep us safe. Well, this is a dumb thing, 
but I remember saying it. You might have done well among the Dalish. Our mages are encouraged to study safely. Fenner will take the Dalish. Don't let my lack of Valisteen fool you. He left leave. I was a proud member of my clan until my magic manifested. You know what happens when they have too many mages. They gave me a pack and sent me into the woods to find my own life. I was seven years old. My clan never did that. We sent those gifted with magic to other clans, or... I stumbled into a village, starving and cold, a few weeks later. I started using magic to scare predators away. Perfect. The villagers saw me make fire in my fist. They were terrified and wanted to kill me. Templars saved me from them. They gave me food and clothes and took me to the circle. I've seen what life is like without the Templars, and I want no part of it. I just want to study. You said that you were keeping some of the Tranquils safe. Yes. The mages took some of them when my circle rebelled. The rest were forgotten. Most circle mages look down on the Tranquil, or try to pretend they don't exist. They don't have any emotions. They can barely take care of themselves, can't defend themselves at all. It's a shame. I like them better than most people. And that bothers me, because that implies to me that she doesn't see them as people. Which, I mean, you know, listen to most disability advocates. Uh, who are not themselves disabled, and uh, that's kind of how they talk. Well, they can't even take care of themselves. Fuck you, lady. I'm glad they have someone who cares about them. They deserve better. They do. They're polite, they're rational, and they'll never get angry at you. When they study, they have a focus no normal person could ever match. But the I will Templars, fight you. even some of the mages, mistreated them just In your ableist could. language. Tranquil never fought back. If not for that, I... I don't know. Doesn't really matter now. You said Cassandra has you researching creatures. Yes. If you find anything interesting in your travels, I'd appreciate you bringing it to me. I may be able to find some weakness our soldiers can exploit when fighting various creatures. At the least, some materials are useful for making potions or gear for the Inquisition. Why did you decide to research dangerous creatures? I like the outdoors. The idea of the outdoors, anyway. When some monster is coming at you, glowing eyes and burning claws, it's terrifying. But once he you knows. know how it works, you can deal with it. It's just another part of the world. So much of this world is only frightening because we don't understand it. I found something the demons left behind. Can you use it? Yes, that's very helpful. Just leave it there, and the Tranquil and I will examine it. Will One of the things that, that I uh, wrote into Ilari's backstory was an explanation for his scars. So, uh, when Ilari was just a hunter, uh, his sister was training to be first the Keeper. Um, he went on a hunt, and ended up with uh, a hawk diving at him, trying to uh, go after something something that he had caught. I think I decided that I was uh, gonna go with all of the all of the um, lovely little things that you find along the way in Inquisition and make it a hare because you know the hare and the hawk are on a lot of the uh, Dalish items that you find. Anyway, so he had a hawk diving at his face, and uh, that's where one of them came from, and I believe I'll look it up later. I believe the other one was because he was trying to help out with the Hala, and one of them was startled and, like, sc scored up his face by accident. Anyway, um, I believe yeah, so I'm gonna do the armor thing after I actually uh, get the golden nug to sync up my collectibles and things. Um, so, most of this is all where can you go from here? So, I'm gonna do my uh, selling and crafting and golden nug and all that off-screen between streams. So, um, 
thank you guys for hanging out with me for almost two hours. I hope this was a little bit less of a disaster than the first time. Um, and I am going to try and come back and stream on Friday morning around the same time. Um, hope you all have a good couple of days. Thanks for hanging out.